How's it going everyone? This is a 2010 Cadillac CTSV four-door sedan that's uh, about ready to go up for sale. Um, the V-Series is Cadillac's high-end performance racing inspired series. Uh, this particular vehicle is a uh, second generation CTSV. So it takes its engine directly from the uh, C6 Corvette ZR1 build. Uh, this is a variant of that. <clears throat> the engine is called the LSA engine. It's a 6.2 liter supercharged V8, producing 556 horsepower with 551 pound feet of torque. And in the automatic, which this is, the 0 to 60 time is 3.9 seconds. Top speed of approximately 175 miles per hour, which is electronically limited. And if those of you are into modding, you can certainly get that number up much higher than the factory, factory settings. So this sedan is being sold as a fully optioned vehicle for the 2010 lineup, 2010 year. Um, it has all the options that were available at the time of sale, uh, including the 19-inch uh, um, alloy wheels. The UltraView panoramic sunroof. I just have it propped open in this case to give the car a little bit of ventilation. And on the inside, uh, the Alcantara wrapped steering wheel and shift knob, as well as a few other goodies that we'll show a little bit later. The rear of the vehicle has a third brake light that also doubles as a functional spoiler. You can see the, the angle that it has there producing a little bit of downforce as you get up into speed. This vehicle is also equipped with the uh, ultrasonic uh, parking sensors that are uh, mounted on the rear bumper. And they coordinate with uh, a lighting system as well as an auditory warning system uh, that's inside the cabin. I'll do a demo of that in a little bit. Let's see exhaust tips. Everything in this vehicle is 100% factory stock. This has never been modified. So there it is, nice side view. Let's go around to the driver's side of the vehicle. This car also has the uh, Midnight Sapel, um, my camera can focus here, the uh, Midnight Sapel uh, wood trim that goes across the all four doors of the vehicle, also including the uh, trim on the inside of the vehicle here, let's see if I can get a good shot of that. It's a little bit hard, I'm facing into the sun there. This vehicle is equipped with the um, Alcantara wrapped steering wheel, as well as the Alcantara wrapped shift knob. Also featuring the Recaro racing inspired seats. Nice V logo there. These are 16-way adjustable seats. Um, in addition to having the seat back go uh, backwards and forwards, your seat cushion can also go up and down in both the front and the back, as well as in and out. Uh, these switches here on the side control the seat bolsters, both for the, um, the seat cushion as well as for the seat back. So if you prefer a more stiff and, and snug ride or a more uh, spacious ride, you can, you can adjust these bolsters uh, to your liking. The control pad dial here is uh, to adjust the lumbar control. Uh, there is basically an air pressure system that mounts into the rear of the seat um, and uh, controls the lumbar support all the way up to approximately where the V logo is, uh, to the bottom of the seat. You can go in and out, up and down, as well as uh, larger or smaller. 
so it's very nice. In addition, there's also these uh, manually adjustable um, leg support for your thighs, give you a little bit more comfort while you're on the road. Let's take a look at the inside of the vehicle. So again, here's the Alcantara suede wrapped steering wheel. This vehicle has also been equipped with uh, full-on racing paddle shifters that are uh, made by S2T. Uh, these are aluminum anodized and polished um, paddle shifters. The standard CTSV comes with kind of like paddle shift buttons that go on the sides of the steering wheel. Uh, this these were swapped out with a full-on uh, paddle on either side to make uh, paddle shifting a little bit more easy to handle. Inside dashboard has a 7-inch pop-up screen here for both navigation and multimedia playback, uh, analog clock, as well as a slot-based uh, CD, DVD, and MP3 CD loader. Cup holders are located in the center console, as well as an electronic park brake. And I'll get into this button just a little bit. This is um, this vehicle was equipped with a, a video input harness that operates on the back of the navigation unit. It allows for backup camera integration, which was not offered in the 2010 model, but this vehicle has it equipped through the uh, video input uh, system. In addition, you can also cycle between two additional video inputs uh, if you wanted to connect a multimedia PC to your vehicle or some other type of video input. Uh, you have the capability to do that, and this button will cycle through the various video inputs. Let's actually do a quick startup. Steering wheel has a couple of controls on it. On the left hand side there's the uh, the cruise control set, uh, setting to enable or disable cruise control. Uh, also to accelerate or to decelerate so as to resume or set your previously entered speed. Uh, this is a cancel button here on the top for to cancel the, steering, the uh, cruise control. And this is also a traction control button which controls the stability track operations of the vehicle. You can cycle it between fully enabled one step below. Competitive mode, which gives you pretty much uh, track-based settings with uh, minimal interruptions by the computer to control your stability. And finally, if you hold it in for a couple of seconds, the stability will be turned off. So if you really wanted to control it in a manual way, that's how you would do it. And one button press turns it back on. On the right-hand side of the steering wheel, you have your multimedia and, uh, and phone controls. Uh, you have a, a channel change up or down, as well as a hang-up button for the uh, Bluetooth hands-free calling. Uh, volume up or down, as well as a, uh, a voice button that controls the head unit. Uh, you can basically speak your commands to either tune a radio station, change inputs uh, for audio, uh, as well as a activate OnStar or use your uh, Bluetooth connected hands-free device. The navigation and multimedia screen is a 7-inch touchscreen and um, operates fairly nicely. Uh, this is a completely stock head unit and the maps are current as of 2014. If you don't like the um, the fully extended screen, there's a button here that says nav. Simply press it and the screen will collapse into a flush mounted screen for the dashboard. And let's press it again. Pops up. 
Uh, other interesting controls to note, um, this button controls your uh, your magnetic ride control with the uh, CTSV. Uh, by default, the system is in what they call tour mode. This is offering the most comfort and uh, cushiony ride that the CTSV can offer. If you press the button, it goes into a sport mode for the suspension. Uh, gives you a little bit more stiff uh, type of suspension setup. Allows you to feel the road a lot more than in tour mode. Another button press of it turns it back into tour mode. Um, there, in the front cabin, there are two independent controls for either the driver or passenger uh, for temperature. You can press the passenger button to enable that. Um, the either side has uh, climate control for heating and cooling, as well as for a heated seat and a ventilated seat for cooling off during hot summer days. Passenger also has equivalent controls on their side as well. Uh, in front of the shifter, there is a small pop-up uh, compartment, good for storing change, although it's a little bit small to store pretty much everything, anything else other than that. Uh, DC power input there, and that has conveniently there. Um, in, t in the center console, there's a two-compartment mode for this. Uh, first stores some uh, small devices, pens, uh, paper, cards, and so forth. Uh, the bottom compartment is a little bit more spacious. Inside there's also a um, another DC power as well as uh, auxiliary input for uh, audio and a USB port, uh, 500 milliamp on this guy. So it's not really going to charge a whole uh, a lot of devices very quickly. That's why in this card I just could, uh, added a little USB power input there. Look around the back. We'll get to the rear seating in just a bit. Up at the top, here is your rear view display. Rear view mirror, I should say. Um, OnStar controls here, as well as uh, voice activated controls. Um, the uh, power button here controls the auto dimming feature of the, of the vehicle. By default, it's on. If you press the button, it turns it off. And right now, it's not dark enough to really see what it does, but uh, it is able to darken the mirror within about 10 seconds completely. Uh, the phone icon is to activate Bluetooth, or, excuse me, OnStar calling for voice. Uh, the OnStar button gets you directly to an OnStar agent, and then the um, the SOS or the Red Cross symbol uh, will activate emergency services. Up at the top, we have our controls for uh, GM's home link for garage door opening. You have three buttons here. Uh, individual map light controls. This vehicle has been completely fitted with uh, LED lights as opposed to the halogen that the vehicle normally ships with for all interior lighting except for the uh, vanity mirrors. Those are using the standard halogens. Um, there are microphones here for hands-free calling for both the driver and passenger, as well as a small uh, LED light that shines down in the dark towards the, uh, the center console for identifying where you're shifting and uh, illuminating the bottom half. Inside the passenger side glove box, it's a little bit hard to see there. So if I can get a good focus on that. There you go. Um, just standard uh, uh, dual layer compartment there. Um, not too spacious, but it does hold the uh, the manual for the vehicle as well as your um, license and uh, your registration information and your insurance. seat has two side pockets, one on either side of the front passenger and the front driver position. Front driver position also has uh, steering wheel, or, or rather the uh, mirror controls, uh, as well as uh, buttons to control the, the windows of all four sides of the vehicle, and um, a child lock uh, for preventing the window from act accidentally being rolled down in the rear, and uh, door lock functions as well. Let's take a look at the rear. The rear of the vehicle is quite spacious, enough seating for three full-size adults. Um, in the center console, the bottom 
compartment pops up and uh, revealing a another storage compartment as well as uh, DC power. Here are your rear vents for air conditioning. The seat backs have a, a mesh net that you can use for storing magazines or any type of object that you like. This one has a uh, sun, blind, sun blinds that are stored behind it. Doors also have the uh, midnight sapel wood trim and uh, window up and down button. Here's a nice view of the uh, panoramic sunroof, what they call the ultra view sunroof. The center of the seats in the rear have a pull down uh, armrest as well as uh, dual cup holders and a cargo uh, compartment pass through door which goes directly into the base of the trunk. Rear lighting is up towards the top of the um, the headliner here. If I can focus the phone, there it is. And LED lights for both sides. Um, this lighting compartment here, if I can get this phone to focus, there it is, um, indicates your uh, proximity to devices or any sort of objects that are behind you when you have the vehicle in reverse. This uses the ultrasonic parking sensors that illuminate three LEDs that are visible in the uh, rear view mirror from the driver's perspective. Uh, two yellow LEDs indicate uh, distance to an object. Finally, a third red LED uh, indicates with a um, uh, almost like a, a dinging noise or a uh, an auditory warning that you're within six inches of an object and for you to stop. So it's a very handy uh, tool to use. Vehicle is also equipped with a uh, backup camera uh, through the video input system. So whenever you have the car in reverse, the backup camera will activate in addition to the ultrasonic parking sensors. Uh, there's a separate video that I'm posting that's, uh, that covers that in detail. Here are the uh, side impact airbags, as well as the, uh, the convenience handles and uh, coat hanger hook. Also rear side impact airbags. The trunk of the vehicle is quite spacious uh, for a high performance sedan. Um, There's normally a, uh, a mesh net that uh, comes in between these two contacts. It's just a cargo net uh, that is included with the sale. However, it's not uh, featured in this video, so uh, don't worry, that is included. There is a spare tire compartment here as well. However, GM actually sells this vehicle with no spare tire. So if you are going to use this as a spare tire compartment, uh, please provide your own. GM does, however, include a um, basically a fix-it uh, unit. This is a, a tire pressure sensor as well as a uh, air inflator. Uh, it could be used to repair any sort of flats that you may incur encounter on the road, um, as well as to check your tire pressure. Uh, even though it's not really necessary, the vehicle includes um, uh, tire pressure sensing uh, in the computer of the vehicle. There are some cables that you'll see here. Um, these are uh, uh, twofold, actually. One is a, um, a composite video input as well as a VGA uh, component. I should say it's actually a, a, a VGA wiring on that uh, video cable that goes to the video input selector. Allows you to connect any type of source that you would have to your head unit. In this case, I'm using a small multimedia PC as my um, music player for the car. So, but uh, you'll you'll be getting this cable attached to the uh, video input system, so you can attach any type of video input system that you like. Again, there's that compartment for pass through directly into the cabin of the vehicle, and battery compartment here is behind this uh, Velcro door. A fuse panel for the rear as well.
Here's a nice shot of that uh, backup camera there. And it's pretty well hidden from view. And here we are, 2010 Cadillac CTS-V sedan.